You're listening to an Anna's Owl Ministries podcast. All right, what's up, seasons, greetings, y'all. Welcome back to another edition of this year's Christmas SG Drive-In. So one of the things that I love about this time of year is, um, well, really, what, one of the things that I absolutely love about this platform in, compare, in combination with this time of year is I get a chance to talk about um, some movies that are really special to me. And it's funny, this, this is a time of year where I'm not the biggest fan of Christmas, but there are some Christmas movies that I absolutely enjoy. But to tackle something like this, I needed help. So, first up, I am joined by the one, the only, TJ. What's up, man? What's up? Thanks. Thanks for the intro. And I, we are joined by a returning guest to the show, David. What's up, man? Oh, what's going on? Thanks for having me again. Yeah, I'm glad Peace you're here. Well. So, The Santa Claus. We're talking about one of those movies that has a way of for our for well, I don't I don't know if you and I are in the same generation David I know you and I aren't TJ um but for my generation uh this is this is nostalgia you know what I mean like this is this is childhood and so like I said man I I am I am was not always the biggest fan of Christmas, but there's a handful of movies that kind of pierce through that and are part of childhood for me. They have that experience factor tied in. So I'll start off with you, TJ. What's your experience with this movie? Uh, so I'll get it out there. This movie is older than me and David. Uh, Woof. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this movie came out in 93, but it's kind of always been there, you know, for me. Every Christmas, uh, you know, growing up, we would watch the Santa Claus because it was on ABC Family. Yeah, it would be on. We're going to watch it. It's going to be on a few more times that month. Uh, We watched it in daycare. I was just a fan of Tim Allen as a kid, so I love this movie anyway. But it's it's one of the Christmas classics for me. It's up there with, uh, you know, A Muppet's Christmas Carol, uh, Elf, uh, Charlie Brown Christmas. One of those. I I love this movie. How about you, David? So uh, I grew up in Puerto Rico and I didn't learn to speak English till I was like eight years old. And huh. there weren't there weren't many movies that were translated into Spanish or translated well into Spanish. And so this is the official Christmas movie for my family growing up. I mean, I watched this movie huh. several times for a while. If if Santa Claus didn't look exactly like Tim Allen, I thought it was like some kind of cheap knockoff. I thought Santa Claus was always spelled with an E at the end up until like last year. Uh yeah, I mean, and when it got when we finally learned or got comfortable speaking English, uh, I watched this movie all the time. We didn't have like was it was it Denny's that they had their Christmas dinner in? Yeah, yeah we yeah. didn't have Denny's in Puerto Rico, and so I thought, man, Denny's has got to be this like magical place that, that that's <laughs> amazing. And I was so disappointed the first time I ate Denny's. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's yeah, only one. Be there's like only that. one Denny's. <laughs> There's one Denny's that's like that. It's it's Denny's headquarters in Spartanburg. Really? Which is yeah, because that you know Denny's was started in Spartanburg. What? Yeah. Huh. So Ooh, I know where I'm having there. Christmas dinner. Right. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, it it's funny. I I you look back at these kinds of movies, and you mentioned TJ, um, ABC Family. A lot of these movies like this before streaming services and yada, 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 like that was really a gateway for a lot of people to be exposed to these movies for the first time, because these are prime fodder because it was all owned by the same, by the same company. And so these were prime movies to show on a network like that, because this, this movie, I, I struggled to think of a movie uh, no, I can think of exactly one other movie that that does a comparable job of marrying humor for adults and whimsy for kids. You know what I mean? Does like, it, and that's a Christmas story. And so, for me to say no. that, that's that's saying something. Yeah. So the Santa Claus Two is not up there for you. <laughs> N- not so much. Mm. Mm. All right. Yeah. With with these kinds of movies, I you tend to find the first one gets the gets the blend right then as it goes on b 
because it's merchandisable, because you can make money off of it, what do you want to do? You want to drive more kids into it. And so you lean very heavily into the kid side of it, which obviously you can make the argument that that's exactly what a movie like this is meant for. But generally when that happens, it has a way of also losing a little bit of substance along with it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. But the third one though, I don't even, I can't even think about anything. I cannot recall a single scene from the Santa Claus three. Wasn't that the one with Jack Frost? Uh, I thought that was two. two. No, two was where he, where we had like the plastic toy Tim Allen or something. Um, I thought those were the same movie. Oh no, you're right. You're right. Yep. Those were the same movie. Cause it was Jack Frost, like tricks the toy Tim Allen or something and tries to take over Christmas. Yeah. And becomes so two is two is where he gets married to yeah. the new Mrs. Claus. And then yes. I think three is the one yes. where they're having a kid. Yep. Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. It's all coming back to me now. And then Charlie was like a delinquent in two and yeah. the, and his principal ended up becoming his wife. Yeah. I remember it now. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I yeah. feel like core memories were just unlocked. Absolutely. Yeah, I uh it's I don't know. So so let me ask uh, I'll open the I'll open the question up to the floor. What makes a movie like this span generations? You know what I mean? Like I was alive when this movie came out and you guys in in obviously very different situations grew up with this movie and were exposed to this movie at relatively a similar age. It sounds like y'all might have been a, a a scooch older than me when this movie came out. Uh, came out. I want to say I was like four, maybe five when this movie came out. Um. So so what makes a movie like this so impactful that multiple generations can come together and talk about it? Man, I gotta say it might be Tim Allen. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I've always loved Tim Allen. Home Improvement, amazing show. Yep. Zoom, horrible movie. If it's on TV, I'm going to watch it because I love Tim Allen. Uh, what else? Toy Story, Tim Allen, hello. Uh, he's just got something special. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I, I believe it might be something about how it's like, I just think that they presented it in a way that it's timeless. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's vi- the colors are vibrant. The message and the morals of the movie are like really simple, and you know, it's just a fun. They, like you said earlier, they really handle the humor well, where the parents could have fun, the kids could have fun, and I mean, for me, it was it was the cultural thing that like we didn't get something in Puerto Rico until it was like five years old in the U S you know, or in mm. the rest of the United States, because we just, we were, we were behind. I Like when SpongeBob, SpongeBob came out in Puerto Rico in like 2003, I think when it was already over here in like its fourth season. So yeah, yeah. I think that that played a big part in how, how my brothers and I started watching it. But I think the reason we can still enjoy it now is because it is it is timeless. I mean, it dates itself with like technology, but it's just fun anytime you watch it. Yeah, it, it's so well made. I, I'm going to laugh every time I see the Santa Claus. I'm going <laughs> to enjoy it just as much as the last time I watched the Santa Claus. It's yeah. just good. It's a great movie. Yeah, it's hard. Opinion. It's hard sometimes when you talk about these movies that have been a part of the periphery for for as long as they have been that to 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 try and quantify what makes them so special and you know i think for this movie in particular it's it's layered i keep going back to the same idea as what makes hocus pocus as good as it is because it's a combination of a good through line and good individual moments within the through line and I would say the same thing for this. And I think what makes, I think for me, part of what makes this so special is there's there's a magic that it tries to convey about the wonder of belief and the wonder of, uh, I don't want to make it, oh, I don't want to change the term of faith and say that that it that it it tries to show something like that because I don't think it necessarily goes particularly in that direction. But there is this emphasis 
on reconciling the reality of what you believe in. And when you have that and you're able to capture that and like larger themes that get adults thinking and are, are nuancy and all of those kinds of things. And then you can package that within a story of generations of people discovering, you know, the magic of the situation and being swept away in this, in this, the, the series of events. I think you've got something really special on your hands. And I think that there's something to be said for that kind of commonality that you can see in some of these generational movies that you hear discussed over and over again. And they're, they, they remain in the conversation where others kind of fall off for a reason. Yeah. I, I think another thing it does so well, it humanizes Santa, I guess would be a decent mm-hmm. way to say that. Uh, you know, it gives you like, my dad really could be Santa Claus. That's that's something special for a young child. Right. And even, you know, getting older, it's like, oh, you know, my dad's starting to look kind of like Santa Claus. <laughs> you know, it's, it's happening. But that's funny. That's that's so common for so many people. And I just think it, it helps the younger kids cope with the fact that Santa's not real, yeah. which will be revealed to them if they watch this movie and they didn't already know. Which Yo. could be a little shocking. So that's like a spoiler warning for any of the kids listening who, yeah. don't, who don't know. So I'm sorry, guys. Like <laughs> Santa's not real. So so since it was since it was TJ that rang that bell and you can't unring that bell, then send all complaint mail to TJ Blackwell at AOL.com. Um <laughs> you know, it, it's it's funny. Uh, you you mentioned that TJ and I think of the scene of the kid in front of his class would bring your uh, bring your parent to work or to to school day or the um, career day. You know what does your dad do? My dad is Santa Claus. Like there's yeah. there's an age bracket where like if you had the opportunity to stand in front of your class and say that your dad was Santa Claus, you'd think that was the coolest thing in the whole world. You know. Yeah. I mean, it's a seasonal job, but you get a lot of respect for, you know, a big seasonal job like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I would tell my classmates that my dad was Santa. Yeah. Especially if I if I rode in the sleigh and delivered presents with him. I don't think you'd be able to stop me from telling everybody my dad was Santa Claus. That's uh, funny. One, uh, <laughs> one thing I also think that the movie handles really well. And I thought I thought of this the last time we were rewatching it, my wife and I is that it handles blended families way better than any movie at that time. For Did real. Did you catch yeah. that? Yeah, like in most movies in the 90s, a blended family, the stepdad is a complete buffoon, like an idiot, and the wife leaves him to get back with her ex-husband. But this movie, they stay together throughout all the movies. And I thought, I thought, wow, that's not only realistic, but really interesting that they tackled that. And it wasn't like a main part of the movie. It was just there. I thought that was so realistic in rewatching it. Yeah. And they still take the time for uh, Tim Allen. I think, what is his name in the movie? Scott? Uh, Yeah. Scott Scott Calvin. Calvin. Yeah. And he takes the time to explain to Charlie, like, Hey, your entire family is important at Christmas. You Mm -hmm. have to stay with them, which I feel like if I was Santa, I wouldn't say that. But if I was just a, a dad, like, yeah, that's a great message. But if I'm Santa, I, you know, like, it's not their fault. They're great parents, but I'm Santa. That's, yeah, I'm I taking found the, the body with first. Me. Yeah, exactly. But And that's the, that's the fascinating thing. Like, for real, what this movie is, is dude fell off of this man's roof. He put the suit on. And took over his job. But like, this is like a timeless class. Like, yeah. it's fascinating to me, the movies that end up sticking in in the pantheon of cinema. You know what I mean? No, yeah, it's it's so absurd. It, but at the same time, it's really easy to believe that that's the way it always was. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, I know. I absolutely believe that Santa just gets killed by the next stronger Santa. <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> Survival of the fittest, but for Santa. Yeah. 
Uh, there, yeah. So that scene, I didn't realize how much it traumatized me as a kid <laughs> because because <laughs> I thought of it. And recently, we were, my wife and I were watching the Santa Clauses. And in the first episode, I don't think this is a spoiler because it's like one of the first scenes. But Tim Allen falls off of a roof and we both audibly gasped and like sat up like this is over. Like he's dead because that's how easily it happened in the first movie. Could you imagine in the first couple of minutes of the series? Boom, done. New guy. There you go. Oh, people would be so pissed. They just kill oh, him immediately. Imagine the Santa Claus is just being like a new like some a Santa dies at the end of every episode. And it's the Santa Clauses because there's a new Santa every episode. That would be good. I'd still watch that. Yeah. 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 yeah the horror. Like off Tim Allen. The power move. Right. The <laughs> horror fan of me would film. love to see like what that would look like. You know what I mean? The dangers <laughs> of the job, but Santa Claus. Dirty jobs, but Santa. <laughs> <laughs> like that's. But imagine that's how they all die. They all just slip off of a roof. Right. I mean, it's not beyond belief. It's icy up there. Yeah. 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 That comes like, with a the the Santa Claus document comes with a waiver. You're not allowed to. You know. You <laughs> understand that you're probably gonna fall off of a roof. Yeah. No cleats. Yeah. No ice spikes. You don't get a harness. You right. got to get in and out. <laughs> if you fall, that's your fault. You had a good run. <laughs> but like, if you're Santa Claus, right? And you know that, like, occupational hazard number one is falling off of a roof. Why don't you, from the sleigh, grab the bag that you know will that you can levitate with and just float over to the chimney? Yes. That way you don't have to worry about it. Or, like, have the elves make you, like, traction shoes. Yeah, some super cleats or something with, like, some Christmas magic or whatever. <laughs> I... <laughs> it's just i don't even it's not even that complicated like just walk on the spine of the roof one foot on each side what are you doing climbing anywhere other than the chimney where it's well, much much easier to fall off the roof then you'd like he'd get somewhere like south carolina podunk nowhere and all the roofs are tin and so there's nowhere <laughs> to step on and he just he's it's just a slide to his death yeah, but that's why you stay on the spine. Catch yourself. You <laughs> he just does over. a split. Come down the snow pipe. Because, you know, we don't have chimneys in South Carolina. Unless your house was built before, like, 1990. No one does that here. That's funny. It's a tall route. All the Santas just have splits down their uh, down their pants from doing a split down the spine of the roof. <laughs> yeah. No, they have the Santa pants have that like special sewn in diamond right where the legs meet, like those uh, Duluth Trading Company pants. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, occupational hazard. Phenomenal. Yeah, so for me, like I said, this movie uh, easily ranks in the top five. I could confidently say in the top three. You know, I think I think with A Christmas Story and Charlie Brown Christmas, I think if I was forced to pick a third, that would probably be it. Um, and I think in that order, definitely A Christmas Story at number one. Depends on when you ask me, I think, between Charlie Brown and this. How about you guys? A full top three? Yeah. Uh, ew, what a question. I do love A Muppet's Christmas Carol. I really do. It might have to be number one. Elf, probably top three for me. Sorry, Joe. Uh, most people do like that movie. Uh, and most people are wrong. It's fine. I've accepted this burden <laughs> on myself that I, I I have to carry the torch for the people who are correct about this subject. I love the original Rudolph, the 60s, 61 Rudolph, I think. Yeah, me too. Oh, uh, that's a hard question. That's a really hard question. Die hard. Ah, I was going <laughs> to say uh, die hard. Yeah. Uh, nice. So that uh, that'll probably be my one, two, three uh, Muppets Christmas Carol, and then uh, you know, Die Hard, and then Elf. Yeah. There you go. What about you, David? So I would say the Santa Claus is probably my number one, just because I watched it so much growing up. It's just got that soft spot in my heart. Uh, number two would be Die Hard, just because I love the fact that that's clearly a Christmas movie. Mm -hmm. And number three, I haven't watched a lot of Christmas movies. All right, guys. But number three would probably be Violent Night that just came out. Is that good? 
it's so good. It feels like a parody of 80s movies. Like at one point, Santa's on the phone, all diehard style. And he goes, you better get ready, punk, because Santa Claus is coming to town. And it's definitely it's definitely not for kids. It's it's a very like it lives up to the name. It's a very violent night. Yeah. But it borrows some of the lore from the Tim Allen movies Does where it? like Santa Claus has to tap his nose to like magically go up a chimney and everything. And <laughs> it's it's pretty dope. Uh, it's a it's a good movie. Is is Violent Night in the the Santa Claus expanded universe? Uh, I don't think so, because it goes into some of the some of the lore of the Santa Claus. It's kind of a curse. It's the Santa Claus curse where you just kind of have to like live forever and deliver mm-hmm. presents mm-hmm. to ungrateful children. It's a, it's a really it's a good movie. It's it's definitely a dumb fun. It feels like a turn off your brain. This is a parody of an 80s action movie type of thing. But yeah, yeah those are my top it. three. Yeah, That's it crazy. sounds like a good time. So what about what about the Santa Claus 2? Santa has to get married. It just it's not the same. I mean, it sounds like the American dream. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's Move that's about America, the same. become Santa. <laughs> yeah. Get married. But I, Yeah, I think that's have... exactly what's wrong with it is it sounds like the American dream, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but I, what I don't remember is what happened to Mrs. Claus. She just what like goes into the background. I yeah. mean, they get married and No, 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 the other Mrs. Claus. Oh. Oh. Maybe she fell off a roof. Or maybe she just like stopped existing once he faded. That's what I'm saying. Wouldn't that wouldn't that be something like you you marry Santa Claus, but you know that if he goes, you're done too. Yeah, like what happened? Like, do they just know that when their husband falls off a roof, they're gone? I'd imagine that's somewhere in like that little card. Which, by the way, that's my favorite running joke. Is that like it's not a handbook. It's just you have to keep zooming in closer. (laughs) And closer to that card that he picked up. But yeah, maybe it's in there. Like your wife disappears when you do. Do they get to know that? Because I'm (laughs) nearly certain they don't talk about it at all in the Santa Claus 2. Hey, by the way, if I when I fall off my roof, (laughs) uh, you're going to disappear. Yeah, slight complication, but you're not you're not going to exist. Have you ever seen Avengers? It's like that, but different. (laughs) Just interesting unanswered questions that the Santa Clauses could address. Yeah. Mr. Could Claus, you? I don't feel so good. <laughs> Could you imagine if uh, the like in the Santa Claus is you meet Mrs. Claus like they show they, they showed the original Mrs. Claus from like the guy that, Ooh. you know, and there's like this moment of like talking to her, even though like and, and like coming to terms with the fact that he's like progressing out of the the Santa Claus uh position well that they do ask that question they ask the question but i think it's just kind of a throwaway gag i mean i have i'm only three episodes in the show but in the first episode mrs claus is having like this identity crisis of like well what happened to the other mrs clauses why do they all look like this sweet seven year old lady and i don't look anything like them also what's mrs claus's first name why don't i have a first name And they go into all these questions, but don't answer any of them. (laughs) Sweet. That's perfect. They know what we want and they will not give it to us. (laughs) Yeah. That's a perfect way for them to say that. (laughs) Oh, man. man. Yeah. I don't know with how much you would think you would think that would be a little bit more fleshed out with how much the emphasis came on his family after like you, you establish him in the role and then pretty much everything else focuses on santa claus the family man and like i don't know you would think that that would be more flushed out but also like that's i'm not sure i would like it if it was flushed out because like that's the part of the the story that i dislike the most is (laughs) the santa claus is family man sort of thing but yeah Uh, i want other like this movie like irrevocably connected thanksgiving and christmas for me just because that's like all right i'll come get you next thanksgiving and i'll bring you back to the north pole so in my head since i've been a child like thanksgiving that's when the christmas starts happening and it's all because of the santa claus that's funny that that's that the santa claus did that for you what did that for me was the macy's day parade (laughs) always being on thanksgiving 
Yeah. But like it would be so Christmas centric. That's why I don't understand people who are like, it's start it's it's starting before before December. Like it always, Christmas always has started before December. Like consumerism is not new. Yeah. Since at least nineteen ninety three it started before December. Yeah. Uh we never really connected Thanksgiving and Christmas uh growing up just because Thanksgiving wasn't really that big of a holiday to us growing up. We uh mm-hmm. We actually had another holiday in February called Three Kings Day, and it's literally just a second Christmas. And instead of Santa, the three wise men would bring you gifts as if you were the Messiah on the way to see Jesus. And so that would be when the family got together is in February and we just give each other more gifts. What a what a special holiday. Yeah, you'd leave out uh, grass or hay. And a bucket of water in your yard for the camels. That's crazy. I've never heard that. You never brought that up before. So the community that I used to live in in Minnesota um, was very diverse. And there was a family that I befriended that would tell me about that. Uh, tell me about Three Kings Day. And I, I thought they were screwing with me at first. I thought that the, I, I thought they were making it up. And so, But I looked into it and I'm like, huh, I, I, all right, that's that's a thing. Okay. Yeah, it's a big deal. It's a really big deal. I remember we used to have parades and stuff in Puerto Rico, and we'd have like floats g- like go through our our little community. It was awesome. Sometimes the governor of Puerto Rico would be on one of the floats, waving at everybody and throwing candy. It'd be awesome. That's there you go. But imagine imagine having uh, like a January birthday, like a mid January birthday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so tough. Yeah, right smack dab in the middle of both. Yeah, you're not getting presents all three times. No, <laughs> for real. <laughs> Something's got to go. Man. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. So you know, I think I, I think in in bringing this thing in for a landing, you know, I, I for this for, for a movie like this, I think the name of the game is capturing something special. You know, I think for me, a lot of a lot of the a lot a lot of the common thread for these are all it's all about capturing that something special and for a movie like this i think it i think for adults and and for especially for christians there's this there's this it factor that exists in life right it's this you you can call it whimsy you can call it wonder you can call it a lot of different things and a lot of adults don't have that for a lot of reasons, there's a variety of reasons why why people just don't know how to live with wonder, with this with this sense of being in awe of something, it, you know. And, and I think a movie like this, what it does so special is for for adults and for kids, it allows you to get caught up in the experience of giving like have having that kind of like being swept up in belief being swept up in wonder all of that kind of stuff and yes where this falls off from the obvious angle that i am approaching this from is we're talking about christmas we're talking about santa we're talking yada yada yada. I, i i understand where the analogy falls apart but i i think the principle stands though I think part of what makes this special, yes, Tim Allen, awesome. It, it fascinates me how some of these people they they do they really do transcend generations. Like I don't mean to make a big deal about it, but like we were born ten uh, at least ten plus years oh, difference from from one another, TJ. And you're sitting here talking about how much you enjoy Tim Allen's stuff. I and and I grew up with with the guy on my TV. You know what I mean? Like Home Improvement was coming out when I was a kid. Toy Story, this like it, it was a, he was a significant figure in 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 the the cultural zeitgeist of the time. And so you know, there's that. There's the how well it's made, the jokes, the humor, all of it. But I really do think that at its core, it allows for people to be swept up into something magical. And I know that's a weird word for some people, you know, magic, whatever. But like, there's this sense about the whole thing that I think as adults, if we allow ourselves to go there, if we allow ourselves to be vulnerable enough to be there, something really special can take place. It it opens 
it opens yourself up to accepting that there might be things larger than yourself working around you and that you get to be a piece of that along the way. Yeah. It's like the shaggy dog. Another great Tim Allen movie. <laughs> I, you yeah, lost like me entirely. Getting... I don't know what that is. No, that was, that was after your time. <laughs> it like a movie about the out. time that he was uh, caught with cocaine in an airport. It was medicinal. Yeah. <laughs> medicinal. <It was> medicinal. <laughs> Uh, that's one of those yeah. that's one of those fascinating things you think that you know yes i understand that he has a past and all of that kind of stuff but he never ended up getting canceled that fascinates me that he never yeah. ended, ended up getting canceled for any like i mean granted it yeah. cocaine charges are one thing but like yeah i mean i think i think there's i think there's a reality to the fact that you can do this thing with your life, like make mistakes, do whatever, that, that sort of thing, and still be able to turn things around to being yeah. this person who, who provided something special to generations of kids, you know, in different contexts, in different situations. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to put him in my top 10 actors of all time list, but he definitely is an actor of all time. Yeah. Maybe top 100. One of the things that I always found weird about the Santa Claus movies and just the lore and the way it works and everything is, uh, well, like the world is believing less and less in Santa, you know, and now they're doing this thing where like, oh, if people believe less than like, then, you know, his magic lessons or whatever. But I mean, Santa Claus hasn't always been a thing, but it uh, even in, even in the first movie, he tackles, you know, getting like dealing with the parents who don't believe or the stepfather and everything who doesn't believe, but he's still Santa, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I think that's where it differs from our faith, but I think that's also, it also was just a cool, at least in the first movie, a cool way to address it. Like, yeah, you don't have to believe, but it's still there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think, I think that, that was really cool back then. It's not the same thing now because they've retconned a lot of stuff or whatever, but I've always thought that was really cool. And it definitely does open up your imagination to be able to consider things. Yeah. And it's, that was always weird to me because he was Santa Claus and he could just go tell people and prove to people that he was Santa Claus. So why aren't people believing in Santa Claus? <laughs> pretty telling. If you ask me pretty, pretty realistic. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. I'm a Christian, so I, I consider all magic witchcraft, so. <laughs> true, true. Yeah. Yeah, Santa was in the Bible, though. That's. Yeah. <laughs> yep. There you go. Yeah. That was that was in the Apocrypha. That's in Third Maccabees. <laughs> <laughs> oh, TJ, that's why we have you on the show to offend people. Uh... <laughs> Catholics don't count. <laughs> Bro. Again, again, TJ Blackwell at AOL.com. Um, so, you know, I, I I do yeah, I think I think there's something to what you're what, what you're talking about, David. Like I just and and I'm I'll be the first one to admit, guys, I'm a little biased, right? I'm a, a, a huge part, like a very substantive part of what I preach in any time that I like, I don't know about any time, but a lot of times, if you catch one of my sermons, if, if, if you catch one of my live streams, whatever, I'm talking about kingdom. I'm talking about wonder. I'm talking about standing in wonder of all of these conversations that we have about theology and we have about scripture and we have about history and all that kind of stuff. Let's stop and reconcile and allow the story to wash over us that the creator of everything, is in is it is, is in personal relationship with us that we get to say that that we get to live in that actively here and now we don't have to wait for for heaven to experience that that's the indwelling of the holy spirit and so for me something that dares the adult to go there i only see more and more valuable as i get older because i see more and more how seldom adults allow themselves to feel that and to experience that and to go there because that's that's challenging. That's scary to go there because it really does require that allowing for things to extend beyond yourself. And as a Christian, you should say, you know, that that, should, that probably comes across as, well, yeah, of course. But 
I let me just let me just tell you when you cross when you cross over into into being the guy at the front of the room, you realize more and more the you know what what that actually looks like in practicality. So, fellas, any closing remarks? Go watch the Santa Claus. Uh, if it's not in your regular Christmas movie rotation, it absolutely should be. I don't know how you missed that one. Old Christmas movies aren't that good. <laughs> Put it away um, for a year. I would say this in hindsight, this podcast was definitely not for children. I mean, TJ's over here spoiling Santa Claus for people, and I'm over here recommending Violent Night. I mean, geez, we need to put some kind of content warning at the beginning. With your parents' express permission, go see Violent Night. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Editor's note, make sure that there is a um, expressed warning for children and for Catholics. Do not listen to this episode. (laughs) Man, I hope our viewership numbers are solid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we're gonna we're gonna find out how big our audience of our how much of our audience base is Catholic by this exact episode. Thanks, TJ, for the market research. <laughs> Data analyst. So, yep. So, uh, yeah, I, I have to echo you know my cl- my closing remarks is you know let let this one get into your uh, Christmas rotation. Go watch it um, if you. You know, it, it, watching a movie like this, you know, when you watch it, yes, yes, you're watching a kid's movie. Yes, you are watching a movie in general. It is there is there is a limitation to the story that is be, that is being told. I understand that. However, like we've been talking about this entire year, as as I with a variety of the other hosts have been going through with the Narniad, there are some works that invite you into a posture of asking questions of of poking and prodding at the boundary markers a bit let this movie do that because if you do that and you do that earnestly you be be willing to get answers be willing to investigate that because the things that you're asking about they're like at at the at the core of what it means to actually live you know this is not going to turn into can sermon number five but those concepts of being being willing to ask the bigger picture uh, what the bigger picture is being willing to get caught up in the wonder of being a part of something bigger than yourself that stuff and what you find when you look exactly there that is what it means to live and to truly experience this life so with that Thank you guys for joining us for another installment of the SG Drive-In. Make sure you tune in for more great additions along the way leading up to our big Christmas special. And as we depart, we want you guys to remember one very important thing. We are all a chosen people, a geekdom of priests. This was an Anazal Ministries podcast. If you enjoyed this show and would like to learn more about our network, be sure to check out the Anazal Ministries podcast network.